Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus today. I'm Trace, and this is episode two of five in our new series on domestication. We're talking this week about when we started domesticating the first animals and how it helped us become better people, or at least a better species. And then also the downsides of domestication, and there are some. There's also a difference between domestication and taming, we're gonna get to later, and you, f you can reverse domestication and how that works. So make sure you subscribe so you get all of the episodes this week. It's gonna be a really interesting week on the animals that we keep around ourselves. But yesterday we started talking about this and dogs were the first domesticated animals, right? So if dogs were first domesticated and then they became kind of part of our small encampments, they didn't start out the way that we see them now. They didn't start out as pets, but now we think of them that way. An ancient man, we don't really know how they thought of these dogs, but they were likely helping out around camp in some way, either through defense or through helping during the hunting. They could also be used to assist people who need help, disabled and the elderly like they are today. We're not really sure. But animals that we domesticate do help us in a variety of different ways. And animals like the dog and others have helped us advance as a civilization. Many agree that after the domestication of the dog came the domestication of the sheep. Sheep and goats were probably the first animals to be domesticated for livestock purposes. However, like the dog, because it happened so long ago, there's a lot of mysterious stuff floating around stories that we've kind of told ourselves over the generations. Experts aren't sure which wild ancestors became domesticated sheep, and we just know that that probably happened. Then, after sheep or goats, we got cattle, uh, domesticated from a, an extinct wild cattle called an auroch. Some experts think that the wild ancestors of the cattle that we have today were originally a single herd of 80. After uh, sheep and then cattle, we get pigs, which came from wild hogs. Uh, not the movie, but, uh, you know, actual wild hogs. All of this happened between 10 and 8500 BC in places like the Fertile Crescent and the Mediterranean Basin. So after livestock, and we started domesticating food sources and work sources, came other animals like chickens and horses, llamas, donkeys, camels, guinea pigs. All of these things became domesticated over time, and this changed everything in human civilization. Before the domestication of wild plants and animals, humans had to go from place to place following a seasonal pattern. We were nomads, right? We were a nomadic peoples. When it became winter and food would become scarce in one area, we would move to another area where we could eat and survive the winter time. But once we figured out how to plant crops and how to keep animals, then it changed our lives, not just for one generation, but forever. We could stay in one place. Population density could increase. Larger communities could be built. People could spend their time not hunting, gathering, and walking from place to place, but they could travel and trade. They could build civilizations. They could enjoy leisure, and they could communicate with each other in ways that they'd never had time to do or even been able to imagine before. It was domestication and all of the things that came with it that really defined the beginning of the Neolithic Revolution which is categorized as a time between seven and 10,000 years ago after the Paleolithic period or the Stone Age. Stone Age, obviously you've heard of, that's when men were using crude stone tools, but with the advent of agriculture and the Neolithic Revolution, things start to change. This is where we see the first permanent dwellings. When you think of the Stone Age, you probably think of people living in caves and things like that. You know, they had a lot of temporary dwellings because we were nomadic. There was no reason to build a giant house that you would live in all year because you were not there all year. You maybe were only in that encampment for a short period of time. And then once we started doing that, we could start to specialize in specific tasks. We had animals so we could get food. So we didn't have to go hunting and we would start creating tools made out of various things that were more difficult to work with, like metals. And this is when we start to see things like pottery and weaving and architecture. I mean, think of it this way. If I've built a permanent house, I'm going to try and put as much as I can into that house. And what if my neighbor Brian has a nicer house? Now I got to make a nicer house too. And then I got to make it more aesthetically pleasing. And this is when architecture starts to come in and property ownership as well. Brian's house, that's separate from my house. And he shouldn't come over here because I've spent a lot of time making this house really nice 
place and I don't want him to ruin it, property ownership. And then once we have land ownership, we start to think of like, okay, now I need an army to defend my land because Brian's people are gonna try and come over here and steal my stuff that I've accrued inside of my house. I don't know who Brian is, kind of a jerk. Anyway, experts think that it was the change from hunter-gatherer to this more farmer shepherd society that brought out these new technologies. So as we see societies start to develop and encampments turn into small towns and small towns turn into civilizations and agriculture and domestication of animals was a cornerstone of that advancement. Before that, Everyone in a small area, in a tribe or an encampment or a village was needed to help with the hunting and gathering. Think about it this way. In a Native American tribe, the men may go hunting and the women would stay back and tan the hides and try and make sure that the encampments were ready to go just in case there was a battle or something. You know, I mean, there were, there were jobs for everybody, right? However, with agriculture and with livestock, surpluses started to be a thing. You could have meat and you could have a harvest that was stored and could be used throughout the year. More animals and plants meant more meat, but also stronger cattle that could be used to work larger areas of land, meaning more plants and more vegetables. So it was kind of a building effect. More animals and plants meant more work, meant more animals and plants, meant more work could be done, meant more animals and plants, meant more work could be done. And that freed us up to have all sorts of new things like artists and craftsmen and religious figures and clerks and leaders and bureaucrats and whatever else you want to go with, you know, software engineers. Without domestication of animals, we can't do any of those things. And it's no coincidence that the area where domestication first started is also the area where writing started, where metal tools were invented, all sorts of things started in this part of the world. And as societies grew, they started to spread. The world is becoming more populated because now we can hold on to and grow food from a specific source that we can control. Partly because you don't have to do this hunter-gatherer stuff, you don't have to be nomadic, women could give birth more often. You could argue that through domestication, women were allowed to have a little more sexual freedom. It was hard for a mother to travel with a baby. It was harder to have babies during specific times of the nomadic lifestyle, harder on the kids, harder on the moms, harder on the families. So early women would have to spread out their births in different times of the year, but domestication of plants and animals allowed that to be a little more free and society could spread. And because of farming, people were more interested in doing those things. They had to work this land and they could get more and more land. People were also interested in moving east and west, in expanding outward, because if they stayed along a similar line of longitude, the weather, the climate would be about the same. The seasons would be similar. The daylight and the nighttime would be similar. And domestication of plants and animals helped us create these things and invent all of this technology and spread out across the world. But it also changed humans, not just as a society and a civilization, but it physically changed us. It made us a different type of human. So first off, before the domestication of goats, milk was for babies. It was produced by humans, but it would also be produced by animals, right? And milk was for babies. At some point, people could no longer digest milk as they aged. They couldn't break down the lactose. And every person would become lactose intolerant. That sugar just couldn't be broken down. However, once goat and cow milk became available, eventually someone somewhere in the lineage of man, probably in Northern Europe, became accustomed. They mutated. They didn't turn off their lactose breaking down skill, right? And at some point, because of that mutation, it was an advantage. Now, that human and that group of humans, that family, could spread a little better because they could drink goat's milk their whole life. They could drink cow milk, cattle milk their whole life, and that eventually spread through society. Now, if you look at the statistics, people are still not super great at digesting milk, even today. Many populations are lactose intolerant. However, it did spread through society over subsequent generations. And today, most people can drink milk fairly freely, uh, at least in the United States. Around the world, it's a little different. And it's sort of the same with a high starch diet. We eventually evolved to eat a lot of starchy foods as well, because some scientists look at it like this. Agriculture began to explain how we changed in our guts, but also how we got taller as a species. And one theory suggests 
that because early farmers ate less meat than hunters, their vitamin D intake was less, they developed lighter skin, earlier hunters were darker skinned, they got uh, a lot of vitamin D from the meat that they ate. But farmers began to eat more plants and vegetables and less meat, getting less vitamin D, so they would lighten up their skin so they could absorb more from the sun. Again, this is over many, many generations, many. Our immune system has also changed because of the domestication of animals. If you are out in the wilderness around a small group of humans and that's it, your immune system becomes accustomed to that herd. Hopefully you understand herd immunity, the idea that people near each other, their immune systems work together. In a society where more people began living closer together and there were bigger communities and they were closer to these animals, diseases started to pop up. Measles and tuberculosis, which we got from cattle. The flu, which we got from pigs and ducks. Eventually, certain groups of humans became immune to diseases which they'd acquired from their domesticated livestock. And when they encountered other groups of humans who didn't have that immunity, it wasn't so great. Specifically thinking like colonists that killed off natives with diseases that they'd already adapted to. There are benefits and consequences of domestication for humans. And no doubt, it completely reshaped the world, our society, our bodies, and our minds. But we're not the only ones changed by this domestication. I mean, we're very human focused, we're very selfish, and we are human after all. What about the animals that we took out of the wild? How did they change once we domesticated them? That's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe to Test Tube Plus. You can get episode three. You can also go find us on iTunes. Make sure you check us out over there. And thanks a lot for tuning in this week. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think about the domestication of animals. If you could do it over again, would you want to domesticate like a different animal? Cows? Dogs? Something else? Let us know in the comments. And keep coming back here for more Test Tube Plus. Test Tube Plus.